In the biting cold winter of 1939, the Soviet forces, huddled in their ill-fitting uniforms, trudged through the unforgiving Finnish landscape. The Winter War had begun, and the Soviet military machine, a formidable force on paper, found itself staggeringly unprepared for the trials ahead. Stalin's Great Purge had gutted the Soviet military and left it with few capable generals and an overabundance of yes-men who underestimated what would await the Red Army in Finland. As the Soviet troops reached beyond their territories and pierced the icy Finnish lands, not even the constant crunch of snow beneath their boots could muffle the growing grunts of their starving stomachs. Despite marching in a state of utter fatigue and depletion, the Soviet army managed to circle around the Finnish lines and deliver a decisive rear surprise attack on the Finnish supply and artillery troops at Baralampi Pond. As the Finnish forces fled, the attackers suddenly stopped pursuing. Amidst the chaos, the retreating Finnish troops left behind a tantalizing sight. Field kitchens, still simmering with pots full of steaming sausage soup. The scent of the hearty stew wafted through the air, overwhelming the senses of the Soviet soldiers. Forgetting their mission, they abandoned their pursuit and desperately fell upon the food. This moment of vulnerability would lead to the Sausage War, one of the strangest battles of World War II. The Finns, seizing upon the unique opportunity presented by their foe's distracted state, regrouped and mounted an epic and ferocious counterattack. The Purge the reasons why the Red Army found itself starving on December 10, 1939, are complex and numerous, but the most important of them can be traced back to Joseph Stalin, the iron-fisted ruler of the Soviet Union. In the depths of his paranoia, Stalin believed there were enemies everywhere – traitors, spies, and saboteurs. His ambition to consolidate power and maintain absolute control had driven him to embark on a campaign of terror and retribution. The Great Purge was unleashed a brutal culling of perceived threats to his regime. With the passing months, the Great Purge took on a life of its own, consuming the nation in a whirlwind of bloodshed and treachery. Approximately 30,000 officers, officials, and military personnel, plus thousands of artists and intellectuals, were accused of crimes against the state and subjected to trials, imprisonment, and execution. But in a bid to secure absolute power over his dominion, Stalin had gutted his own military command structure eliminated thousands of talented, experienced leaders and accomplished fighters, and replaced them with yes-men who would never dream of contradicting the wishes of the Soviet leader. As such, when the unique opportunity arose for Stalin to expand his empire and unleash his massive forces on his Nordic neighbor, his high command did little more than reassure him that the operation would be a straightforward victory, and that they would overwhelm the Finns in a matter of days. The Soviets had no idea what awaited them in the frigid land of a thousand lakes. The Frozen Land. It was the fall of 1939, and the intricate web of political alliances, secret negotiations, and long-held grudges had reached a breaking point. Europe would again be engulfed by the fires of war. As global peace crumbled, Stalin cast his gaze upon the lands of his Nordic neighbor, Finland. This territory had defied him by refusing to join the Soviet Union. The Soviet leaders saw in Adolf Hitler's belligerence an opportunity to expand the communist empire while the Western powers were preoccupied with the Wehrmacht's march across Europe. Stalin wagered that the Western powers would find Germany's expansionist ambitions much more menacing than the USSR invading a Nordic country. Although they would surely condemn his actions, they would lack the capabilities and will to oppose him. In this regard, Stalin was correct. But Stalin did not foresee the series of events that would unfold on the snowy battlegrounds of the Finnish wilderness. As he greenlit the operation, Soviet troops, a seemingly unstoppable force, marched confidently into Finland. Armed with the latest weaponry and supported by the unyielding might of the Red Army, their leaders believed that their victory was all but assured. But as the snow began to fall and the temperature plunged to unimaginable depths, it became increasingly clear that the Soviet invaders were woefully unprepared for the harrowing conditions they would face. The inexperienced Soviet command had prepared for a short, straightforward conflict. They had established overstretched and poorly managed supply lines, resulting in inadequate food, ammunition, and clothing supplies. Lacking proper insulation, soldiers faced frostbite and hypothermia in the extreme weather. The khaki color provided poor camouflage against the snowy landscape, while ill-fitting clothing and boots limited mobility. These deficiencies significantly hampered the Red Army's performance and contributed to its early setbacks in Finland. 
Despite the setbacks, the Soviets marched into Finland. Winter War The onset of the war was fast and brutal. At first, the invasion seemed to go precisely as Stalin and his military command expected it to go. Under the cloak of a cold night in 1939, the Soviet war machine struck, and its troops stormed the Finnish capital of Helsinki by November 30th. The world watched in horror as a seemingly unstoppable force sought to devour the small nation. Western powers protested Stalin's aggression and disregard for his non-aggression pact with Finland. Still, as Stalin had predicted, the West took no military action. It was more concerned with Germany's invasion of Poland. World leaders limited themselves to barring Stalin from participating in the League of Nations, even as his troops spread across the frozen wilderness of Finland. Most heads of state watched the events in Finland with alarmed helplessness, knowing that the Nordic country would fall in a couple of weeks. But the Soviets had been deceived by their own ambitions. Even after entering Helsinki, the ranks were soon eroded by the harsh Finnish landscapes and the iron will of its defenders. With little organization, no adequate winter gear, and overstretched supply lines, the Soviet incursion soon lost steam as morale plummeted along with their food stockpiles. On the other hand, the Finnish troops found solace in the frosty landscape they called home. These hardy warriors had access to a continued supply of food and gear to fight the winter. The tenacious Finnish defenders stood their ground, drawing strength from their intimate knowledge of the frozen terrain and the unwavering support of their countrymen. As the Soviet command panicked in the face of their lack of progress, the troops found themselves abandoned behind enemy territory. The Sausage War As the bitter winter continued, the tired Soviet 718th Rifle Regiment was ordered to launch an unexpected assault on the eastern village of Ilamansi on December 10th. The riflemen encircled the village by walking from the Tolbiere front lines, traversing the frozen landscape and emerging at the rear of the enemy position. By the time they reached the outskirts of the village, near the Varalampi Pond, they had been marching for five days straight and were exhausted and starving. Still, they had the element of surprise. The Finns were not expecting an attack from behind, and the Soviet numbers held the advantage. Starving as they were, they managed to execute an overwhelming attack on the Finnish defenders, who quickly fled, leaving everything behind. The Soviets had the upper hand. All they had to do now was pursue the enemy and claim the region, but something stopped them in their tracks. The smell from the Finnish cooking tents and the sight of the stewing pots of sausage were too much temptation. Unable to resist, the Soviet soldiers threw caution to the wind and indulged their cravings. As they feasted, they failed to press their advantages and unwittingly squandered precious time. As the invaders feasted, many of the retreating Finnish soldiers had time to regroup. Caught off guard. Amid the chaos, Major Piari found himself near the Koroselka Road. He rallied the soldiers of the 16th Infantry Regiment alongside a motley crew of field cooks and medics, forging an unlikely but determined fighting force. They knew where the Soviets were, and they knew they were likely distracted and vulnerable. They drew their bayonets, headed back to their captured camp, and mounted a fierce counterattack. Catching the Red Army off guard, the Finns tore through the distracted Soviets. The confrontation was one of the rare instances of bayonet fighting during the Winter War, and it raged long into the night. As the first light of dawn broke on December 11th, the determined Finnish force had succeeded in repelling the invaders. The Soviet troops, battered and broken, retreated from the field. In the cold light of day, the actual cost of the conflict became evident. Finnish estimates placed the Soviet casualties at over a hundred, while their own ranks mourned the loss of twenty brave souls. It was an unlikely but welcome result for the defending army of cooks and medics. The Soviets were left reeling, their once formidable regiment decimated. The frozen battlefield bore witness to the terrible price paid for a moment of weakness. Inspiring Hitler Though fleeting, the battle left an indelible mark on the war's course, stalling the relentless Soviet advance. The Sausage War stood as a symbol of the Red Army's vulnerability and the resourcefulness of the Finnish forces. Despite this triumph, the brave Finnish defenders could not halt the march of history. The struggle continued for 105 more grueling days. In the end, however, they could not withstand the crushing might of the Soviet war machine, and they were forced to sue for peace, but not before humiliating Stalin on more than one occasion. The Winter War and the defeat of the Red Army during the Sausage War laid bare the weaknesses within the Soviet military. This revelation was not lost on Hitler, who saw an opportunity to capitalize on their vulnerability. The abysmal performance of the Red Army emboldened him to reevaluate and refine his plans for invading the Soviet Union. 
as it became apparent that the once feared Soviet military might was not as impregnable as the world had believed. The unlikely skirmish centered around pots of sausage soup would ripple throughout the war, proving that even the smallest battles can have profound and far-reaching consequences. The story of the Winter War was not one of triumph, but one of miscalculation, hubris, and an underestimation of the indomitable spirit of the Finnish people. Thank you for watching Dark Docs, and make sure to hit that like button. If you want to learn more about unexpected events and consequences in military history or the equipment behind them, subscribe, click on the bell icon, and check out our other Dark Documentaries channels.